Let's walk you through the timeline of this solar eclipse. This is for Little Rock now. There you see, eclipse glass is going to be worn. 12.33, the eclipse starts to begin. So when you put on your eclipse glasses, say around 12.35, 12.36, you're going to see the disk of the sun. It's going to probably look pretty orange in it. And then you'll see pretty much a semicircle or a little bite of the sun starting to disappear as the moon's shadow is making its way across the sun's disk. But the most impressive event is going to be, once again, totality, 100% coverage. And there you see, you don't have to wear the glasses. This is the only time you can look directly at the sun when it is 100% covered. At 152 here at Little Rock, and then once the sun starts to reappear, put those glasses back on. Hi, Sammy Sparrow. Hi, AC. Hi, Susan BZO. Hi, little Dev. Hi, Miss Justice 1111. I'm trying to not get a copyright strike. This isn't YouTube. It's actually our live TV, but I don't know how. Hi, Kiki Eyes. Hi, Fairy Dust. Hi, Amy in Boston. I don't know how they feel about me playing their stuff. <laughs> um. How's everybody doing? Hi, Carrie Bishop. Guys, what I have pulled up on my screen here, let me flip the lens. I look terrible. I've been working out in the yard, but we don't care about that. We're not here for a beauty contest, are we? Hi, guys. How's everybody doing? Hi, Candy Malin. You won't see much of anything on the West Coast. Kids. Carrie Bishop is getting packed up to move to her new house. Little Deb, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Oh, I see you and your daughter are both. Oh, my goodness, honey. A hundred and two temperature. Hi, Shelly T. Um, <laughs> I hope that everyone will understand the title hanging out. I think I said during the solar eclipse. Hi, Nada Drama Nana. Um, it's, it's not clickbait for us to actually look at the eclipse. <laughs> so everybody that's coming over that's like, oh, she's going to actually show us the eclipse. Babies, I don't have, hi, Annie Lou, I don't have the proper protective filters for the lens on my phone to actually point my lens at the eclipse itself. But I know there are plenty of other places, uh, or surely there are, where you can go and like, you know, the big news stations and stuff like that. Um, but what I thought was maybe anybody that just wants to hang out and chat about whatever. I, I pretty much, as long as you, you guys know the how it is over here. As long as everybody's being nice and respectful to each other, I don't care what you chat about. But here's here's what I just thought. Um, um, that I would start out in here. Uh, it's another about 25 minutes. Hi, Angela. Before uh, the eclipse actually kicks in here, we still have the benefit of clear skies. So I was just like watching a little bit of this from THV 11 credit for what we were looking at regarding the solar eclipse. Full credit goes to THV channel 11 out of Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, you guys know, hi Pam Fogel, that I'm in Heber Springs, Arkansas. And believe it or not, <clears throat> beg your pardon. 
our county, hi Cherokee girl, our little town, Hebrew Springs itself, was designated as one of the best places to go in Arkansas to see the eclipse. So, although I'm not going to point my lens at the sun, um, I thought I would go outside and hide the journey to justice and just um, sit around and see how it looks being outside and hear how it sounds being outside. Hi, Chopper. One thing that, Shelly, do you think that sounds okay? And like I said, anybody that uh, they're like, no, I want to actually go watch the eclipse itself. I totally get it. This is just a friendly chat room to hang out in for uh, anybody that would like to maybe, I thought maybe I would point the lens uh, at a spot that has uh, shadows. Hi, Ramblin' Rome. Um, you know, a place maybe towards my little, um, I walked around and tried to find a spot because what I'm thinking of, okay, thanks, Shelly, um, is uh, watching the movement of shadows, you know, while we're chatting or uh, sound wise, uh, I diverted my own attention from this just a moment ago. I was going to make a remark about an experience I have had. Uh, it wasn't a total solar eclipse. It was a partial. And this would have been, I, I can't nail down the year, but it was in the 1990s. Okay. And I was living remotely on, uh, well at a place called Rattlesnake Ridge on 28 acres out in the middle of nowhere. I didn't have, uh, I was off the grid for a few years. So I didn't know there was an eclipse going on and I was out working in my yard like I do here. <laughs> and I could see Let's see. I don't know how to describe this. Smattered across the rocks, the glade of rocks, were the shadows or silhouettes of, I'm not sure exactly how to, to term it. Hi, SWTC. Hi, Poppy Red Mustang. Um, I could actually see the sun with the shadow of the moon across it, but it was a repeated pattern over and over and over and over again through the leaves of the trees. It's very, very difficult to describe. And I was like, wow, what's going on? <laughs> hi, Holly, hi. And I realized it was a partial eclipse. So that was, that's was that been my only experience. I know nothing of eclipses I, uh, other than they're really cool. Uh, my husband, Bob, did bring me some eclipse glasses. I walked out twice and looked through them. Um, I'm a bit reluctant. I mean, I am an old lady with cataracts, okay? <laughs> So let's see, on my wall clock in the kitchen that I'm glancing at right now, it's about 11 minutes after 12. And according to this awesome guy on THV 11 out of Little Rock, Arkansas, hi, Bama Pan, hi, Tar Heel. Um, we've got about 20-ish minutes before it actually hits Arkansas. So let me see if I can get away with a little bit more of information from him since I know nothing other than I just think they're really cool.
So let me flip the lens here. And keep them on. The eclipse will be entirely over by 311. Let's talk about the eclipse timeline because there are several things that you could experience and you want to look for as long as skies are clear. 50 minutes before totality, there's going to be a decrease in solar energy. As the sun begins to disappear, the Earth's surface will not be able to absorb as much sunlight or sun's energy. So the air temperature will drop a few degrees. Could be two degrees at first, and then 100% coverage, the air temperature may drop five, six, seven, eight degrees. Wow, that's cool. I mean, not unexpected, actually, you know, common sense wise. We stop and think about it naturally because in a way it's sort of like dusk sort of like evening kind of. and that's what i was thinking of a while ago when i was talking about listening to the sounds and that ties into that former experience that i brought in there as well a noticeable decrease in bird song. Hi, Holly. They hi, Reese Cup. Um, because the birds are going to roost as if it were dusk. Uh, so naturally, a decrease in solar energy and a drop of maybe up to seven degrees in air temperature starting 50 minutes before totality. Okay, cool. Nothing I can do a total eclipse of the heart. Oops, wrong button. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, no out there. Also, if there's any puffy clouds, those clouds will probably weaken or actually disappear and then they'll reform once again after the eclipse is done. Okay, so here's where we are here in my little town of Heber Springs, Arkansas, on this timeline. We are now... Mm, about 17 minutes from the beginning. So we're right in this time block right now. The sky is going to become darker Animals and plants are fooled. How about that? <laughs> and colors are going gray. Now, colors are already going gray here. It began actually, <clears throat> I beg your pardon. I've been pollinated, you guys, so I've got a little bit of throat problem here. Not sore throat, just, you know, how it is when you get pollinated. <laughs> um the sky has not yet begun to darken, but I have noticed already decreased activity in Rags the Rescue Dog, who is kenneled outside, and in the rescue cats. Everybody is starting to um, lie down. I keep pushing the wrong button. 20 to 10 minutes before totality. The sky will become dark. You'll notice it gets a little more of a grayish hue to it, and the colors will. Hi, burnt grilled gray. cheese. It's That's like okay. The eyes are, are playing tricks on you, um, but also the animals and plants will be fooled as well. You'll notice the animals will act a little strange. They're getting ready for bed. The birds might go into the trees and stop singing. Yeah. You may hear crickets and frogs start to make some sound because. Now the cool thing about crickets and frogs. We're situated about, oh gosh, more than a stone's throw. But if you've been with me, I think we have a couple of times, I know one time for sure, I took you guys down the walking trail. And that the head of the walking trail, you could walk out my backyard across the road and you're at the head of the trail. Beside that trail, which is called Sulphur Creek Trail. <clears throat> Y'all, I'm so sorry 
to keep clearing my throat. I'm sure that's very aggravating on your end. Um, that trail is called Sulphur Creek Trail because Sulphur Creek runs along beside it. And in the evening here at my home, uh, tree frogs, uh, cicadas, of course, when they're here, they're not here this year, crickets and all of the night animals that enjoy being in a creek area come to life at night. And uh, once in a while, on the very rare occasion, we will hear a Bob White, a Nightingale, or a Whippoorwill. When I was a child, we heard many of them every night. Now it's rare. They're thinking nighttime is near. And also plants that bloom during the day, like tulips or a morning glory, may start to close up. Other things to look for, five minutes before totality. Now this could be really interesting. If you're Okay, now this moon shadow thing is the thing I was trying to describe to you guys a while ago that I was able to see during a partial eclipse. So that would be cool if I can find a spot where it would show up on my camera, the moon shadow. We look in a long, visible, uh, got a lot of visibility to the horizon. You want to look for a darkness, almost like an ominous look to the sky as there be a darkening along the horizon with the moon's shadow approaching your location at over 1,600 miles per hour. So look out for that. As approaching at over 1,600 miles an hour. <laughs> I, it's... I'm laughing because of the way right after that he said, so look out for that. <laughs> Y'all, the moon is approaching at over 1,600 miles an hour. So look out for that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> as long as the skies are clear. And one minute before totality, there's could be some weird things that do happen with the light because as the light starts to diminish more and more and more, those rays of light will interact with their Earth's atmosphere. I'm being followed by moon shadow. Moon shadow, moon shadow. Atmosphere, and you'll see waves of light possibly on the ground and also on the walls. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're under a pretty shady tree, like a big deciduous uh, maple or some other trees that have a lot of leaves to them, the cracks in between the leaves will act like pinhole project. Okay, this is so cool, y'all, because what he's describing is what I was going to describe, like pinholes. The leaves act like pinholes. Oh, this is so cool. And those will actually cast the eclipse on the ground. So you can see hundreds of eclipses. Hi, Tanya. Projections of the leaves as the light goes through those leaves, casting uh, hundreds of projections on the ground. It's a very surreal effect. Very surreal effect. Bingo. You can also witness the eclipse using a calendar because there's pinholes in the calendar will also produce tiny eclipses along the ground. This is what you really want to pay attention to. Seconds before totality, still have to keep those eclipse glasses on for the... And of course, on this channel, that is what we will not be looking at. <laughs> You'll have to go somewhere else for that. In order to see the corona appear, the diamond ring... Haley's Beads, you're going to have to go to one of the really cool channels that, <laughs> that can, <laughs> that's equipped it to show that to you. And it won't hurt my feelings a single bit if you kids do that. This is just a friendly hangout chat 
for a little while during, as a, you know, I'm not going to stay live during the entire eclipse. I basically want to see it happen outside, <laughs> looking at the ground, and then tell you guys how much I love you, which is tremendously, and then say goodbye and get on with the yard work that I am doing. Oh, when we get outside, I'm going to need you guys to tell me if I find a location and we are pixeling on your end. I won't know it. It's always crispy clear on my end. Uh, I keep trying to remind my live audiences on both channels. This channel as well as, as Furry Feline Monsters of Mass Destruction, our cat and dog rescue channel, of that, uh, that I'm not aware of when we're pixeling. And I, do, uh, I did a live stream on furry felines the other day and almost the whole doggone thing because I was outside was pixeling out. So, Carrie, honey, it'll be when we go outside that I'll mainly need to know, darling. Diamond ring effect and also daily speeds. But the final rays of light as they make their way around the valleys and the mountains of the moon, they'll find their way across and then eventually get to your eye and it'll produce what's known as the diamond ring effect and also Bailey's beads. And this is something everybody always watches out for just before totality. It only lasts a few seconds, so you have to pay attention and don't get distracted by your phone trying to capture a picture or anything like that. You really want to just take in this experience as much. Yes, because after all, the moon is moving at 1,600 miles an hour, so... Watch out for that. As much as possible, because <laughs> it's not going to be happening for a long, long time after this. Totality, now you can remove your eclipse glasses, and now you can look directly at the black sun. And what you will see is the... What? During totality, we can look directly at it? <laughs> That's not a horse neighing. That's me. <laughs> Guys, we're going to have to get outside. How much? White glow. That is the corona of the sun. That's the outermost layer of the sun, and it is very hot. But we do not see this on a normal day to day basis because. It's blocked out by the rest of the sun's light. So the only time you can see this almost like angelic glow of, around the sun is during a total solar eclipse, as long as skies are clear. Okay, there's a minute and 59 seconds left of this, but we've only got about seven minutes left until it starts. Let's see. All right, I'm going to leave this playing. And I'm going to run and uh, go tinkle and hope that the cats don't knock this camera, this phone over while I'm in the ladies' room. Also, you may be able to see a prominence or a burst of plasma from the sun that will link its way from one sunspot to the next. If it shoots out into space, it's known as a solar flare. So you could also see that as well. I told you how dark it's going to be. It's going to look like twilight out there. You might be able to see the planet Venus or even Jupiter and maybe some of the brightest stars in the sky just because it's going to get that dark. But it's all a wash if we have clouds in place. It'll still get dark, but we won't be able to see the diamond ring effect. We won't be able to see the corona. We won't be able to see the Ellie's beads if we have clouds in place. And hopefully that's not the case. So when we take a look at the breakdown now, this is for the cloud climatology okay. of April 8th over the... This was put out several days ago, kids. That's why there's a forecast for cloud cover. All right. I made a successful trip to the ladies' room. <laughs> uh, let's see. I've got a uh, TV tray, the one you guys were just sitting on. <laughs> so I got to try to get out the door with it. Leaping and hopping like a moon shadow. 
moon shadow, moon shadow. Let me see. Sorry about all this. <laughs> all right. I have to be in the shadow where I can't see anything. Let me try this and see what happens here. Let's see. Come on. Well, I'm trying to flip the land. Oh. It will only obey one command at a time. Trying to see what y'all are. What, I can't hardly see anything, babies, because my vision is so poor anyway. But I think, okay. Are we pixeling out or is it clear? Because I'm hoping the angel shadow might work for us. I know this isn't the most beautiful view in the world, but we're clear. A little bit of both. Image and sound are okay. 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 I got to get me a chair and a cigarette. Guess I better get an ashtray too. I see you, girl. <laughs> I'm out here near Rags the Rescue Dog. Any of you, excuse me, kids, I just burped. Those of you that are familiar with the layout around here, and that would be most of you. <laughs> Uh, you know, right now I'm sitting beside my car underneath, barely underneath the carport here. And that means I'm close to rags. And she's looking at me like, oh, are we going to walk? You want to see rags? Okay, hang on. There she is. There's Rags. Rags, Angela wanted to see you. And I promise as soon as the live ends, we'll take a walk. <laughs> Even the queen burped. <laughs> Hi, real rock and robin. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> We're just hanging out. I want to see what it looks like out here in my yard when it goes. I'm trying to get it. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
didn't see Annie Lou. She's I rescued her out of the middle of the road. Hi, Carlos. Guys, if I squint, I can kind of make out your chat. It helps that I'm familiar with your usernames already. <laughs> So, what do you guys want to talk about while we sit here and wait to see what the shadows and stuff do? <laughs> oh, thank you, Holly Hyatt. Yeah, Pam, she's, uh, okay, guys, the wind's picking up. I uh, remember a while ago while we were watching it, of course you do, when he talked about solar energy would change. We may get some wind. If you're wearing earbuds or earphones, kids, I'm so sorry. Um, if you need for me to muffle, or not muffle, but mute, please feel free to let me know in chat. Uh, because we're now beginning to feel <laughs> the wind picking up because of the change in the solar energy. So let me know if the wind gets too much for your ears on your end, you let me know and I'll mute my microphone. Yes, Holly, it is a red bud. It's getting its leaves now, but it has been just stunningly beautiful for several weeks, more than several, actually. Hi, Lucy Cat. Babies, like I said, I'm truly having to squint to see you, darlings. Uh, Honey, I can't see your name, but I can make out that you're asking me what time it's beginning now. We just had the first surge of the change in solar energy with the wind starting to pick up. Uh, in the trees in the distance, I can see it beginning to, uh, I don't want to use the words, I started to say swell. Uh, it isn't swelling or surging so much as it's just gently picking up in a manner that's out of the ordinary. <laughs> and uh, if you're just coming in, I would like everyone to know that uh, my name is Susan and the channel, of course, as you already know, is Lip Lock No More. And you are so welcome to hear. And thank you for coming over for a casual chat during the solar eclipse. We're not going to actually point my lens at the eclipse because I don't have the proper protective filters for my lens. Um, we're going to hang out and experience maybe a little bit of what it feels like and sounds like and looks like uh, to be outside during a total solar eclipse. And uh, that's why I made the casual title and description for this live stream because uh, I do not use clickbait. So I don't want anybody to think, oh, gee, we'll go over to Lip Lock No More and uh, we'll get to see the total eclipse from Heber Springs. No, we're going to see the effects of the total eclipse. <laughs> And as I've mentioned several times uh, to those who were already here, um, it's not going to hurt my feelings the least little bit for anybody to leave this live stream and go to a place where you can actually watch it. So, um, Almost let my cigarette go out.
I hope y'all don't get mad at me if I just, hi, Vicki. Uh, hi, Missy Jesse. I hope nobody gets mad at me if I just, if there are moments of long silence. Um, I don't really have anything to talk about uh, other than working in the yard. It is that time of year. That's why, well, every year about this time, I usually post either a community post on each channel or make an announcement of some sort on each channel so that people don't worry because there's some of you kids out there, believe it or not, that worry, <laughs> express concern if you don't see me on YouTube. Uh, with the frequency that you see me during the fall and winter months. Uh, and I guess since a year ago, I've gained several thousand subscribers. <laughs> so maybe I should remind folks that I'm an outdoor woman. I have enjoyed gardening flowers and herbs particularly, culinary herbs. Mm, as long as I can remember. So, let's see. One of the things I do over here, if you're new, is uh, share pieces and portions of my life. One reason this channel exists is so that when I am gone, my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren can listen to snippets of stories from Granny's life. So, in talking about love of the outdoors. From uh, about the age of six months to almost six years of age. My family being my mother up until I was three and a half years old, my father, he passed away when I was three and a half from a heart attack. But during the years from when I was six months old to almost six years old, my mom, my dad, three older siblings, my oldest brother, the twins, fraternal twins and myself lived in the hills and hollers of extreme north central Arkansas. We had moved there from where I was born in Missouri to live with Uncle Ott because Uncle Ott was a widower and he had reached a stage in his life where he was losing his hearing. Now we're talking about the 1950s here, okay? <laughs> he lost his hearing and pretty much. Didn't get around so well anymore, walked with a cane. My dad had already had one heart attack. And so the decision was made that our family would be the part of the family to go and live out in the hills and hollers in a big two-story house. There are pictures of it on this channel in a video, a short called Where I Come From. Anyway. It was uh, heated, 
by a fireplace, a very big one. The cooking was done on a wood burning cook stove. There was no indoor plumbing. However, there was a dry sink, a cistern, rain barrels, and a two holer outhouse. I was potty trained in that two holer outhouse. <laughs> Well, just a little piece down the path at the junction at the country road was Miss Wickersham's store. Miss Wickersham and Uncle Ott were siblings. I didn't call her aunt because the store was called Miss Wickersham's country store. And everybody else called her Miss Wickersham, so I called her Miss Wickersham. Miss Wickersham wore her hair, which was silver, in a corona. She would form two very long braids. Her hair was so long that even when braided, she could sit on her hair. And she would form those two long braids and wind them up and around and tuck the ends perfectly and with hair combs, secure those braids into a hairstyle that is called a corona. She was a widow with an adult son And they were wonderful people. Miss Wickersham loved children. She was known to give away free packs of Wrigley Spearmint, Wrigley's Double Mint, but mostly Wrigley's Juicy Fruit to little kids that would come in her store. At the time, a pack of gum was three cents. So was a postage stamp. A roll of Lifesavers hard candy was a nickel. Some kids got a roll of Lifesavers. I was one of those kids. Once in a while, I even got to have a foremost Sidewalk Sunday ice cream bar. But in her love for children, one of the things Miss Wickersham would do is she would have a field trip occasionally out into the forest with myself My best friend, Susie Clark, who died of polio when we were five. Some of the older ones, you know, adolescents, young adolescents, preteens, but mostly it was us little bitty kids, old enough to walk and talk and to know to stay in line, but young enough to be fascinated by the least little old thing. And to this day, almost 70 years later, I remember the first time I experienced the fern that when you touch it, the fiddlehead closes up. I remember Miss Wickersham taking one of my hands in her hand and the other hand in her other hand and explaining to me how to gently take 
my index finger and run it down the rib of the fiddle head of the fern just ever so gently and that as I would do so it would curl up and close. It was Miss Wickersham that taught me why four o'clocks are called four o'clocks. My evening primrose is called evening primrose. Why morning glories are called morning glories. The names of the trees in the forest. Picking up the leaves and examining the veins in the leaves. And just the utter fascination, the innocence of childhood. Utter fascination with everything outside. And I decided when I was about four years old that when I grew up, I wanted to be like Miss Wickersham. I think she would be proud and pleased. Her front yard was full of iris. Every color under the sun. <laughs> I see my neighbors way over yonder coming out with their solar eclipse glasses. Grab mine and step out into the sun. Y'all, I can't see your chat, so I hope you're behaving yourselves. Oh yeah, it's happened. It's happening. Oh, I left my soda inside too. Okay, let me see. I'm going to lay my lighter on my glasses here so that they don't blow away, hopefully, because I didn't bring my soda pop out here either. So I'm going to go get my soda pop. I'm going to flip the lens around here for a second. I'm trying to see your chat.
Okay, guys, there's already a market decrease in the bird song. Have you noticed on your end? Because I know when we're outside on a live stream or like when I do a stroll around the yard upload, uh, the bird song comes through very clearly in the audio. And here comes the wind again. Guys, is the wind too much? Do you need for me to mute? Sammy, you noticed it? <clears throat> oh, I forgot to turn my notification. I always forget to turn my notifications off. Oh, can I do that without... had to move the bubble. <laughs> it was a text message from my oldest granddaughter up in Missouri. She was sending me a link. Okay, it's fine, it's okay, okay, okay. I know that wind and a microphone can really be like super irritate. Ooh, it's picking back up again. Maybe you can, you might be able, maybe if I fluff my, see I can't fluff my, <laughs> we'll use this is an official Hebrew Springs, Arkansas wind gauge right here okay, okay, the bangs are still okay <laughs> hi Suzette It's a bang eclipse. <laughs> I'm turning you guys this way a little bit. <laughs> so I'm a little more centered and I can see you a little bit better, I think. Oh, Shelly, hush. Or like I used to say when I would do a, <clears throat> a live, like a routine, and somebody would say something nice like that, I'd say, go on. No, I mean it. Go on, go on. <laughs> and as always, your chat's popping up and going away and popping up and going away. So, and hopefully we're not pixelating. Hi, Karma is Queen. Good to see you, dear. Thank you for coming over. We're just hanging out because the eclipse is coming on. I wish I knew more words or all the words to any songs that might be related to sun and or moon. But all I can remember from Total Eclipse is Total Eclipse of the Heart. <laughs> There's nothing I can do. Total Eclipse of the Heart. Isn't that something how you can only remember like one line. Reese Cup, your birds, you're an hour. No, Reese, you're an hour ahead of me. Aren't you, honey? I mean, don't dox yourself, but I think it's an hour later where you are. Doesn't that mean you're, heck if I know, <laughs> totally clips of the heart. Real Rock and Robin, honey, I can't remember how it goes. Uh, don't you guys love how this younger generation, which many of you are probably in, how they take a one-syllable word and make a two-syllable word out of it? Noah. That's how it goes. Uh. Turn around. La da 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 Man. Hi, Salty C. It's good to see you, honey. We're just hanging out. I ain't got no content. 
It's a total eclipse coming on. Anyway, I hope you guys didn't mind my sentimental stroll down memory lane about Miss Wickersham. But that really is one of the reasons I have this channel. Years and years after I'm gone, as long as YouTube exists, the channel will be there unless something bad happens. And my my grandkids and my great grandkids and my great great grandkids can go. Hey, I know what tonight. Let's hook up the holograph thing. Anybody got a VHS player? <laughs> I got all kinds of footage of me on VHS. <laughs> Some footage on DVD. I do know. Uh, but anyway, I appreciate you guys letting me take the stroll down memory lane. Um, comes the wind again. I wish you guys could smell it here. It smells like freshly mown grass. My neighbor that has that, let me, my neighbor that has that field, mowed that field yesterday. Hi, Marlena Cantu. We're just hanging out, sweetheart. Yeah, I know. Not, uh, let's see, honey. Who was it that said it? Then, then oh, I think it was Real Rock and Rob and said, then you what is a VHS? <laughs> You already hear that. It's like how people will say with their cell phone that they're going to film something or that they're, no, you're not. You're going to digitally record something. You're not going to film anything with your cell phone. <laughs> you know me, I like to mince words. Okay, so I should have left it on our shadow right there instead of flipping it around on my mug. I think I saw Mohawk Mom. Hi, Mohawk Mom. Rowena Sudpucker, hey girl. Rowena, I'm not even being rowdy. I'm just sitting out here enjoying the breeze and waiting on the eclipse and hoping that I don't run out of phone power before something dramatic happens. <laughs> and just a casually chit-chatting. I know that's hard for you to believe, Rowena, but girl, girl, it's true, Rowena. I am being good today. We have a major universal event going on. <laughs> According to something I Googled the other day, every, I mean, it's not that, okay, what did it say? 375 years is how often I would get the opportunity to see this eclipse. <laughs> well, I don't know, but I kindly ain't figuring on being here 375 years from now. So I figured Rowena, I'd take this particular opportunity to sit out in the carport, <laughs> smoke cigarettes, drink Coca-Cola, and act a fool with a bunch of kids that like to come over and hang out in my chat room for no particular purpose other than they're probably cleaning house, washing dishes, doing laundry, and wish that I just shut up and in the live stream. <laughs> oh, all right. I got to put my. I'm gonna put my glasses on and go under and check again. See if it's 
how far it's advanced. <laughs> Y'all don't pay no never mind to the way Rowena said Pucker and I talk to each other. Hi, Heather Lynn. Hi, baby. Cigarettes, Reese's, and gummies. Okay. I have cigarettes, Coca-Cola, and a THC vape pen. But I didn't bring it outside. I mean... Anyway, what I was going to say if I didn't finish saying it. Y'all don't pay no attention to the way Rowena said Pucker and I talk to each other. Or you can if you want to. It's all in fun. It's taking a big bite out of the lower left-hand corner of the sun. It kind of looks like... Okay, right now, the sun kind of looks like the smiley face thing without the smiley face. <laughs> and like somebody just took a bite out right here. Like if... If my face it was the sun, this is like this. <laughs> Welcome to your official total solar eclipse reporting station network. I can tell you about the time I met Art Linkletter, but y'all don't even know who Art Linkletter is or was. I met Art Linkletter, who had a TV show. Y'all remember a te television? <laughs> it was in black and white. The show was called Kids Say the Darndest Things. And it would have been... Mm, the mid to late... Eight, I started to say 1880s, <laughs> no, 1980s, when the Carti unit in Baxter County, Arkansas was dedicated, Carti, cancer treatment, <laughs> where my sister ended up going later on. Anyway, when it was dedicated, Art Linkletter uh, was the keynote speaker. And because I had uh, a TV talk show in the town, I had to go interview Art Linkletter. And um, the special guest, who's I, I can see this young man as clear as day, and I cannot think of his name for anything. But he had won the silver medal and the Olympics in Roman Greco wrestling. Now, he wasn't there as the special guest so much because of his silver medal in the Olympics in Roman Greco wrestling. He was there because of an association with cancer treatment. Oop, my glasses almost blew off. Here comes the... Every time the wind surge comes, you guys, it's a little bit stronger. Hi, Act Right people. It's a little stronger than the time before. And I'm hearing fewer and fewer birds. But anyway, so yeah, I wish I could remember that young man's name. It's I can remember it wasn't a live broadcast. It was a, we recorded on location. I mean, we were recording the dedication of the Cartai unit 
in toto for posterity's sake. And most of that has ended up in the archives in the library at the uh, at Arkansas State University in Mountain Home, Arkansas. Almost everything we did up there is in the archives in the library. Anyway, um, when I went to interview the young man, for some reason, my tongue kept getting tangled up around my eye teeth and I could not see what I was saying. I could not, I kept trying to introduce him. My cameraman would start camera roll. Give me the five, four, three, And I would say, hi, this is, mm -hmm. and we are with, and I would say his name, and then I would go to say silver medalist, Olympic silver medalist winner in Roman Greco wrestling. I don't know how many takes we did just so I could introduce the young man. I think five or six before, because then after a while, when you're doing something like that, if you're like me, you get tickled. And once you get tickled, it's kind of Katie bar the door situation. So I had to take a couple of breathers because he started getting tickled and, but I was finally able to spit out Olympic silver medal. <laughs> Olympic silver medalist in Roman Greco wrestling. Just say it. Annie Lou, I see you laughing. Rabbit ears. Yeah, rabbit ears with aluminum foil on the end of them. Heck, fire, I remember when the first satellite dishes, you didn't put them on your roof. <laughs> they were as big as my car. I'm not kidding. They were like, I want to say eight to 10 feet in, in diameter. You had to pour a concrete pad. I'm not kidding. You had to pour a concrete pad with metal footings with this satellite dish that was the most horrific eyesore known to mankind at that time anyway, as far as I'm concerned. And this isn't this like the most boring live stream ever on YouTube. <laughs> it's like she's just sitting there talking about nonsense. Oh, you could go watch Jody Sue Brown. <laughs> At least we're outside. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was completely uncalled for. I'm so sorry. My apologies to Miss Brown. Um, I merely meant all I, I all, here's all I meant was this. Some people prefer to be inside in the dark. I don't. That's all I'm saying. So my bad. I'm in my view. <laughs> I'm trying to think of any song I might know that might have something to do with astrological events. Uh, the moon was like a red and ruby cherry. Warmer than a summer's night.
The clouds were like an alabaster palace. Rising to a snowy height. I think I started out too low. Each star its own aurora borealis. I started out too low. Let me modulate. Each star its own aurora borealis. Suddenly, I'm having to think of the words. You held me tight. And I could see the midnight sun. I can't explain the silver rain that found me. Or was that a moonlight veil? The, the music of the universe surrounds me. I keep changing keys. Or was that a nightingale? And then your arms miraculously found me. Suddenly the sky turned pale. And I could see the midnight sun. Was there such a night? It's a thrill that I don't quite believe. Cause after you were gone, there was still some stardust on my sleeve. I can't explain the silver. The rain that found me, or was that a moonlight veil? The music of the universe surround me, or was that a nightingale? Then your arms miraculously found me and suddenly the sky turned pale oh i could see the midnight sun Moon River, wider than a mile. I'm crossing you in stars. Someday. Mm. <laughs> you. I'm too low. You, dream maker, romance, no, you dream, da -da. romance maker. I can't remember the words. <laughs> Wherever you're going, I'm going. To drifters out to see the world. Oh, there's such a lot of world to see. Mm. 
and we're after the same rainbows and waiting round the bend. My huckleberry friend, Moon River, and me. <laughs> well, I sure butchered that one. And I let another cigarette burn up. Are y'all trying to keep me from smoking? <laughs> Annie Lou. Oh, oh, sass and free, sassy and free. Oh, dream maker, you heart breaker. That's it. Wherever you're going, I'm going your way. That's it. Thank you. By the light of the silvery moon, I want to spoon with my honey all croon. Love's tune, honeymoon. Keep a smiling in June. La da da da. La da da da. We'll be cuddling soon beneath the silvery moon. Y'all, it's a good thing this is not a monetized channel because <laughs> I would be copyright, copyright struck, striked, stricken beyond all. <laughs> Okay, Tanya, totally cool. I'm glad. I'm glad. Oh, kids, I, I may run out of battery power before it gets totally dark. I'm getting hungry, and I don't want a mukbang. I could flip the lens and eat something, I suppose. My neighbors across the field now, they've brought a blanket out into their front yard. And they're laying out in the front yard with their eclipse glasses on. <laughs> Our town has been pretty busy. Uh, I would say the influx of visitors began midweek last week. Um, a lot of guys like, uh, well, specifically in my world, small appliance, not small appliance, kitchen appliance repair. <laughs> He's like, I'm not working today. There's a total solar eclipse. I want to watch it. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll just cook on two burners. <laughs> I got to, we need new regulators. My stove is a 1972 hot point and I will not get rid of my stove because it's a 40 incher with a big oven and a warming oven and the other day I went to cook a pot of beans and those of you who cook pinto beans or navy beans well any beans legumes but here in Arkansas, at least the way I was brought up by my mama and my older sister, when you go to cook pinto beans, you bring them up, you wash them real good, of course, and you sort them, make sure, excuse me, there's no pebbles or rocks, which anymore there usually isn't, but back in the day, wasn't anything at all to find a little bit, little pebble or something in a bag of pinto beans. But, uh, you know, after you sort them and wash them, well, you bring them up to a boil and then you turn it down to simmer. And I mean low simmer. Because you've got gardening, a washboard, and other things that need to be attended to while supper's cooking. 
So you cook them slow and long. So I put them on the burner. I always put them on. And went about my business once I turned them down to simmer. Well, fortunately, the business I was going about was in the house, not out in the yard. Because after several minutes, I could smell my beans cooking. And I was like, did I turn it up to high instead of to the lowest setting? And left what I was doing, walked into the kitchen, and it was on warm. It was on the very lowest setting for that electric element to be on. And that electric element was glowing so hot and so red, I literally thought that it was going to melt the bottom of my bean pot. It liked to have never cooled off. And then the burner on the back did the same thing. So, fortunately, I have an electric skillet, a microwave, a crock pot, and an electric griddle as well as a smoker and two grills outside. So I ain't hurting for cooking. As a matter of fact, bragging rights, I can bake homemade biscuits from scratch in a Dutch oven on a campfire. And they are perfect. So I'm not worried about not being able to cook. I just thought it was kind of funny that my kitchen appliance man can't come and put new regulators in my... 50 year old kitchen stove today because there's a total solar eclipse okay <laughs> minimum charge is 110 dollars just to show up you're gonna pass up 110 dollars <laughs> he said no because i'm gonna do it all inclusive I said, well, I can send you the serial numbers and all of that, the make and the model and the yada, yada, yada. He said, that stove is so old, I need to actually come and look. I need eyes on. So I will come and do all of that. Order the parts, but it will be all inclusive for just the one house call. Okay, if you're willing to give up a second house call just so you can watch the solar eclipse. <laughs> I'm going to cook me something on the griddle. <laughs> anyway, for reals, guys, I sure am glad that I was inside. Because if I had come outside, like ordinarily, I'm, I guess it's just the good Lord saying, well, you need to vacuum this floor before you go outside. Anywho. Honestly, I wish I had me a gas cook stove. I like cooking with natural gas because of the infinite and immediate control over the heat. When you tell a gas cook range, when you turn your knob and tell it to go down to low, it goes down to low just like that. When you tell your electric range to go down to low, it goes, okay. I'm thinking about it. I'm starting to cool off a little bit. And here in a minute or two, I'll be down to the heat that you actually want me to be on. Thank you. So. I can't believe that there's still 31 of you hanging out with me on this dumb thing. <laughs> oh, she <shoot>, far. <coughs> Uh, okay. Something's starting to, something's happening. I mean, <laughs> well, obviously something is happening. But it's starting to get dark. I wish I could remember all the words to this one. Just remember that you're standing on a planet that's revolving, revolving at 900 miles an hour. Monty Python.
La da 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 da. Lucy Cat, I would love to have me a mess of fresh green beans with new potatoes and bacon grease. I wish you hadn't said that. <laughs> Oh, Tanya, honey, thank you. Hi, Sleepy Lee. Is it starting to get weird looking for you too, honey? Uh, Sleepy Lee, if you didn't notice the... Hi, Yorkshire Rose. Um, hi, Angie's Life. If, um, if you didn't read the description or you're not... I haven't seen you in chat before, so I don't know. Maybe you're a bush watcher. I know I am. I watch a lot of live streams and never even go into the chat uh, just because I like to listen uh, more than I like to chat. But um, I'm in Heber Springs, Arkansas, which is North Central Arkansas. Um, yeah, I'm really start starting to look kind of weird out here. Hang on. Karma, you're getting a slushy from Sonic. I hope you bought enough for everybody. Ah, oh. did everybody pet see that? Karma is queen is waiting for her slushy at Sonic, and I would bet a dollar to a donut that she did not get one for all of the rest of us in here. I'm mad now. I want to. The new eclipse light. Oh, no, I'm even more jelly. Rub it in. Rub it in, Karma. You're by Joplin Sleepy. I'm pretty familiar with that area. Hi, Lisa Kleckner. Oh, go ahead and laugh. Karma is queen. Karma is queen. I... I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I started to say, I'm going to call a DoorDash, a Sonic DoorDash. But then I remembered that we don't have that kind of thing here. <laughs> Pizza Hut delivers, but they don't have. Yeah, see, Carrie Bishop wants one. I wish I could remember all the words to that. Just remember that you're standing on a planet that's revolving, revolving at 900 miles an hour. In a galaxy we call the Milky Way. You're watching it from the UK, Yorkshire? Cool. Can y'all tell the difference in the light on the green? I'm hoping that the green... Tanya, I'm telling you. I think I'm pretty sure that Pizza Hut, Domino's, mm, only two I ever see in our town delivering the two pizza places. We used to have a mom and pop pizza place, but then when the lockdown, during the lockdown, sadly, a number of the mom and pop um, small businesses, not just food service, but like our sewing machine, our fabric and sewing machine and vacuum cleaner repair shop went out of business. A number of the little places went. There's nothing where you are, Tanya. 
What lyrics, Yorkshire, honey? I I missed it. Yorkshire, you know I'm scared to touch my screen. Y'all, I'm going to have to go pee again. <laughs> if life seemed jolly and rotten, there's something you've forgotten, and that's to laugh and smile and dance and sing. When you're feeling in the dumps, don't be silly chumps up. Oh, up there. Oh, were you giving me the lyrics to Money Python? Oh, you're right at the beginning of Mountains, honey. Yeah, I, let's see. I'm trying to scroll. I'm always scared. I'm going to accidentally look at the sky behind you. Look at the sky behind me. Cheryl, oh, hi, Cheryl, my happy. Look at the sky behind me. Ooh. Okay, guys, hang on. Listen, I've got to, I really have to pee really bad. <laughs> Let me run in and pee. I'll come back out and then I'll try to walk around the yard a little bit, but y'all know how we pixel out. But you can scream at me and chat or red flag me or something and say, Susan, Susan, we're pixeling out, but let me go pee real quick because we're definitely getting some changes going on here. And yeah, the angel, somebody was remarking about the angel. Um, that was my Christmas gift from my husband one year. Um, oh golly, probably 20 years ago. He asked me what I wanted for Christmas. I said, I want a life-size concrete angel. And that's the tallest one he could find. <laughs> okay, I gotta go pee. Oh yeah, it's getting dark, y'all. In this galaxy we call the Milky Way. Which way is, I can't remember which way the, okay. Oh y'all, the sun, right now the sun just looks like a crescent moon. Oh my word, it's beautiful. Getting pretty close. Let me get a sip of my soda pop. I just hate to pick up the phone and move around because I'm afraid that we'll start pixeling out. What do you guys want me to do? You want me to get up and walk around a little bit? Carrie, for you, it just looks cloudy. Okay, get up and walk around a little bit. Angie's life, I wish you could too, honey. And I wish that I had the proper protective filters for my, but darlings, as you know, this is my phone. Uh, it's my connection to the outside world. And I use it more often than not for YouTube than I do my uh, webcam. 
Yes, it is a strange light, isn't it, Yorkshire? It's, yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, okay, let's see. It is, <clears throat> excuse me. I think it's around 1.30 here. I should have looked at the clock while I was inside. Okay, kids, like I said, we may pixel out. I'm not on Wi-Fi. I'm using data, but if y'all if y'all notice, and a bunch of you have walked around the yard with me before, we're in a bowl. These are what you see back there. Those are mountains <laughs> back there. And you can't tell from here, but we are literally down in a bowl. So when I walk around my yard, we can easily pixel out. But what I'm hoping to find is a place where we can see that effect. See my, I don't, I don't have leaves on the pecan tree yet. So we're not going to, we can't get that pinhole effect over here. Okay, babies, while I'm walking, I can't look at chat because I'm an old lady and I don't want to fall down on my face by not looking where I'm going. Nothing here that'll make. Let's see what happens if we get over here under the magnolia tree. I'm looking to see if I can find one that will give us that pinhole effect. Ah, okay. Can you see it? Are we still clear or are we pixeling out, kids? If we're pixeling, there's no point in me trying to hold this. And naturally, now your chat's gone away again. Let me see if we can find a better one. Some pixeling. Okay, honey. Doggone it. <sighs> Pixels. Okay. <sighs> I'm sorry, babies. Yes, Cheryl, I've been working hard in the yard. Oh, it's getting all gold looking, guys. Thank you guys for being sweet. Oh, let me see. What is, can we see it here? Now, of course, the movement that you're saying, if you can see anything, <laughs> are the leaves of the magnolia tree. Hi, Owen Flo. But what you're seeing on the ground is a representation of the moon coming between us and the sun. You could see it, Owen. Cool, cool. Okay, can you guys see it? Angie's life, you can see it, baby? Okay. Let's just hang out here for a second then. Cheryl, you can see it? Okay, cool. And there are several of them uh, obviously because of that pinhole effect. 
Okay, well, I, let's just let's just stay here for a few minutes then, and watch it. Calling all dreamers and optimistic fools. Don't let go of the dream. Make it now. Make it all come true. If you believe in a brighter day, I know we can find our way on this island in a starry ocean. She's poetry in motion. This island earth Spinning like a dancer Gravity is the answer A rendezvous in the blue This island earth Well, we don't know what's in store today. We could spread our wings and soar away. Or we could go like the dinosaurs, they say. The choice is ours to make. If you're looking for a miracle, open your eyes. There was one this morning about sunrise When dawn came like a wave on the sea And it's there for you and me Calling all dreamers and optimistic don't let go of your dreams. Make them real, make them all come true. If you believe in better day, then I know we'll find our way on this side. In a starry ocean, she's poetry in motion, this island earth, spinning like a dancer, gravity is the answer, a rendezvous in the blue, this island earth. I'll be right back. I had to go relight my cigarette. It keeps going out. Okay, we got a peek at that. It's getting darker. 
more golden looking. Yeah, Yorkshire, uh, Yorkshire. the boss is at work. I think it was Cheryl Mahaffey was remarking that I've been doing a lot of yard work. Yeah, honey, that's the disclaimer I make this time every year to you kids that watch me or listen to me on YouTube. Um, I'm outside. <laughs> and if I've got YouTube going at all this time of year, y'all, if I've got it going at all, it's in my pocket and I'm just listening to somebody talking. Now, I know that it will not, it's not going to convey here on my little Android phone. But our sky here is as clear as a bell, except for them little wispy clouds you might see way over yonder past the electric wires. Clear sky. The sky is not gray, but the sky is gray. <laughs> it's not gray. Because <laughs> isn't it, y'all? Help me remember. Isn't blue... The most, isn't that why our sky is blue? Because that is the light wave. And I know I won't say it right, but isn't blue the light wave in the uh, spectrum? Of light. Isn't that why our sky appears to be blue? Because of Sammy Sparrow, your skies are almost violet. Oh, my word. Honey, sometimes uh, here of a morning, well, the sunsets here are beautiful, too. But sometimes of a morning when that sun's coming up, the sky here will be violet and the color of the inside of a cantaloupe. Okay, I'm gonna, all right, I'm going to do, I'll probably be sorry I do this, but I'm going to just real quick, <laughs> just real quick, <laughs> y'all, my camera is making it look a lot lighter out here than it is, it is not nearly it is nowhere near as light as this camera's making it look. I wish, I wish that y'all could. I'm a looking. Sorry if we're pixelating. Oh, I wish. Now, I think this is the only time I have ever wished that the camera on this phone was not as good as it is. Y'all, that green, that bright you guys are seeing out there, it is not. It's not. It's dark out there. Oh, my God. Here we go. Here we go. Ah, this is it. Here we go. Oh, this is so weird. This is so cool. Oh my God. I can hear the town yelling. Woo! 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 Oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God, you guys, oh my God, oh my God. I'm looking right at it because right now is when I can. Oh my word. Y'all can't, y'all, it's not showing up here. That's not what it looks like. The sun is totally obliterated right now. I've never, oh God, you are so awesome. Oh, creator of the universe, you are so awesome. 
Woo! Y'all, I can hear people all over town hooping and hollering. Oh, y'all, it's dark as night out here. I'm not kidding you. All the lights, look, the street lights are coming on. Look, I know, I know that y'all probably think I'm just, I'm overwhelmed with the joy of it, just the experience of something I've never experienced. It's just, look, the sun's totally gone. See, there's no light on the ground now. This is where we were standing one minute ago. Oh, oh my Lord. Our God is an awesome God. Oh, Lord, thank you for the mysteries and the pleasures of your universe. Y'all, I'm being really cautious, but I want to try to walk. I wish you could actually see how dark it is out here. I almost can't see where I'm going. And all the birds have stopped. Wow. All the street lights are on. Let's go back where we started out so we can see the difference because it's almost over now. The total is almost over. Carrie, there's Summer's purple lights. It's dark enough, baby, that you can see her lights. They've been on this whole time. Those purple lights were sent to me by my managing moderator, Carrie Bishop. They burn 24 hours a day for Summer Moon Utah Wells. Y'all, as you can tell, we're sitting in exactly the same spot where we started out. It's the middle of the day and it's dark. Now it's coming back, here it comes. I'm overwhelmed by glory of, of it all. I'm not freaking out, you guys don't. It's not anything like here it comes back. He can turn the tide and calm the angry sea and he alone decides who writes a symphony he made every star that makes the darkness bright and he keeps watch all through each dark and lonely night while he still finds the time to hear a child's 
first prayer. A saint or sinner call and always find him there and though it makes him sad to see the way we live he'll always say I forgive. Babies, I love you so much. Thanks to each and every one of you for coming over and spending two whole hours with me doing just almost absolutely nothing at all. I hope you guys will go and do something positive, refreshing, uplifting. If you're unable to do so physically, in your mind. We all have a place of joy inside. Some folks have to mine a little bit harder than others. But it's there. When you grab a hold of that little piece of joy, hold on to it. Stick it in your hip pocket and save it for a rainy day. Because for sure the rainy days will come. It's a weird thing we call life, babies. And now the birds are waking up again. I need to walk rags. So. Thank you guys. That was a really cool emotional experience for me. And I truly wish you could have seen how dark it was. It was dark. <laughs> okay. So, you know what I'm going to say. I'm going to ask you to be kind to one to another. As a matter of fact, I'm going to admonish you. You know why I can admonish you? Because I'm a grandma. I'm a great grandma. And us old granny women get to do that sort of thing. So I'm going to admonish you to please be kind one to another. We never know what's going on in somebody's life. And one kind word can often make quite a difference in a good way. So it's not going to hurt you any. It's not going to cost you anything. And you will find. And this is a promise. That your kindness will come back to you. Tenfold. And it'll happen. When you very least expect it. That you need it the very most. So, go in God's good grace. I tell you to behave yourselves, but why would I waste my breath and your time? See you guys on the next one. I'm sorry if I missed you in chat. Where's the button? <laughs> Bye, guys. I love you.